Okay troops, last time we were looking at specific heat capacity where every substance requires a specific amount of heat energy to heat one kilogram of that substance by one degree C. The symbol for specific heat capacity is a C and for example for water, 4180 joules is required to heat one kilogram by one degree, that's what that unit means. So, that's specific heat capacity. And we did an experiment to calculate the specific heat capacity for various metals and for water. Now we have a specific heat capacity equation. If you know the value for the specific heat capacity of a substance, then all you have to do is multiply that by the mass and the change in temperature of the substance and you get the heat energy that is required. If you're ever asked a question about specific heat capacity in an exam, you have your data sheet that has various materials and the values for each of those materials are on there. Now that's all very well and good, but there's a problem. Because if you keep heating a substance, eventually you get to a point where it won't get any hotter. So that equation doesn't work because the substance changes state. Now there are a number of state changes. You could go from ice to water at zero degrees, that's melting, or water to water vapour at 100 degrees, that's evaporation, or indeed you could go in the reverse order from water vapour condensing back to liquid water at 100 degrees, or water changing to ice at zero degrees. So the solid to liquid state change is referred to as fusion and the liquid to gas state change is referred to as vaporization. Very important that you know the difference. Okay. Same as we did with specific heat capacity, it will take a specific amount of heat energy to change one kilogram of a substance from one state to another. And this specific amount of heat energy is called the specific latent heat of the substance. Now that word latent means hidden. It's sometimes referred to as hidden heat because when the state is changing, there is no temperature change. So it might be water at 100 degrees C is boiling and changing to steam at 100 degrees C. No temperature change while the state is changing. So for example, if we think about water, it takes 2,260,000 joules of heat energy, theoretically, to change a kilogram of water into a kilogram of steam with no temperature change. And that's what we're going to try and do an experiment to determine. Here's what we're going to do then. We're going to get a large beaker of water, put it on an electronic balance, and put a 1000 watt heater in the beaker. And then, once it's boiling, we're going to time how long it takes to change 50 grams of water into steam. When it's boiling, it will be at 100 degrees, and it's going to stay at 100 degrees. No temperature change. And if we want to work out the energy supplied, it will be the power of the heater, as 1000 watts, times the time it takes to change 50 grams of water into steam. And once we've got that, we can multiply that by 20 to get the energy required to change one kilogram of water into one kilogram of steam. That's the specific latent heat or vaporization of water. Right, here's the apparatus, large beaker of water on an electronic balance. We've got 600 milliliters of water in there and we're going to put a 1000 watt, and you can see that, a 1000 watts on the label there, a 1000 watt immersion heater, that's going to go in the water, we're going to heat it up until it's boiling. So there's the heater suspended in a clamp stand in the water, 600 milliliters, it's just over a kilogram because of the beaker and the polystyrene tub, let's switch it on, and we're going to leave it until it's boiling, and the water has evaporated so that the mass goes down to a thousand grams. 
and then once we've got it down to a thousand grams, we're going to start the timer and time how long it takes to evaporate a further 50 grams of water. So, we're nearly there. Just a few grams to go, the water's at 100 degrees, it's boiling, it's not getting any hotter. And then as soon as we hit a thousand grams, we're going to start the timer and time how long it takes for 50 grams to be evaporated. Here we go then, start the timer. Mm, right. And we'll come back when 50 grams has evaporated. Alright, we're back. Our water is still boiling, it's still at 100 degrees C, it's not getting any hotter than that, but our mass is going down as the liquid changes to a gas. Ready to stop the timer when we get to 50, and there we go. 1 minute and 53 seconds. So, let's use that time and the power of the heater, 1000 watts, to work out the energy that we supplied. Right, let's do the maths. The time to change 50 grams of water into 50 grams of steam at 100 degrees, see no temperature change, was 113 seconds. Power of the heater was 1000 watts. So if we do power times time, that's 113,000 joules for 50 grams. Let's scale it up to 1 kilogram. So we have to multiply that by 20. And that gives us a total of 2,260,000 joules. Now let's compare that with the actual value from the data sheet. It's the same. Bingo! That's the specific latent heat of vaporisation of water.